Anyone else seeing some rather interesting stuff happening in WebEx land? Oh, looks like something We're going down yeah. a long tunnel. I know, we are. We're going down we a are. rabbit hole. I think so. <laughs> I, I, Derek, are you on the phone? No, he no. must not be logged into the phone yet. Okay, I can no. walk in and talk to him. Yeah. Okay, um, okay thanks, Stephanie. I'm just going to put you on mute and walk down. Walk down the hall. Sure. Sounds good. There he is. Derek, are you on the phone? I am. Sorry okay. That. Uh, no, that's okay. Um, Okay, so I we are seeing we're seeing many of your screens, which is an interesting thing, and I've seen this happen on WebEx before. And I saw as you were logging in that um, that you I think you logged in tried to log in more than once. You blow, you blow in more than once. Kelsey, you're faster than I am at walking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks, Derek. I wonder if you need to. Like just log out completely and then try one more yeah. time. I'm sorry. Cause that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Well, he's doing that. I think I'm just gonna say hello to everyone and just sort of start us off. I'm doing a quick scan of my participant or the participants that I can see. So I see there's about I think ten, maybe twelve of us. Um, Great. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It's about five after two, so we're supposed to start at two. This is Kelsey Gallant from the PSP Central Office speaking. I'm. Um, you might see the little talking um, animation happening beside Christina Thomas's profile. So I'm using her WebEx account today. So it's actually Kelsey that you have on the line. Thanks for being with us. We're here today to look at the um, the new tools for the COPD and heart failure modules in InterHealth. So we've got Derek from InterHealth who will be presenting and then Stephanie is also on the line. Um, just a couple of quick things. One, we have two hours scheduled, which I think is plenty. We've done this now with a few other groups and I think we'll probably finish ahead of time. So that's good. You guys can maybe reclaim a few minutes or maybe more of your day. Um, I am going to moderate and I'm going to be here to answer any PSP related questions. I'm um, going on the assumption that most of you were either able to attend or watch the um, module refresh session training, you could call it, that Bruce Hobson and I did a few months ago, which um, was more the clinical, like why and you know what are all the tools and all that. Um, if you haven't seen that, please do. The, uh, the link to the recording was emailed out um, a while back, but if you need it, just fire me a note or Aaron Picard a note, and we can send that to you because that's got a lot of good information about the module in general and, and the tools for COPD and heart failure. Um, okay. So that, that said, we'll, we'll be looking, just we'll be kind of not touching on the clinical today. We'll be just looking um, at what the tools are in InterHealth. So, um, I'm going to basically let, Derek will be walking us through it. You're welcome to ask questions as we go, either by uh, just asking them on the phone or there's also a chat feature on the WebEx some of you might be familiar with. So if you want to type a question in there to just myself or the group, you're welcome to do that and I can pose a question for you. I'll be moderating that. Also, just a reminder that this is being recorded um, so that we'll have the opportunity to go back and, and um refer to it and I think that is all for me. Oh yeah, I, if you're not speaking and you um, wouldn't mind just muting yourself, that would be great. If Unfortunately, if I can hear a lot of background noise from you, 
I might have to mute you, in which case I'll try to send you a note to let you know. Um, Derek, I'll pass it over to you. I can see your IntraHealth main screen right now. Yep. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, so uh, this one is going to be showcasing the heart failure and COPD uh, PSP modules uh, that we developed in conjunction with uh, the PSP and Doctors of BC. For those who attended our previous uh, mental health uh, child and the adult ones, this is going to be a similar process. In addition, that uh, this is the first time uh, because mental health did not have the old CDM forms like we did uh, with heart failure and COPD. I'm going to be showcasing some of that as well because uh, just to help distinguish some of the confusion if uh, some of you haven't seen it before and how one or the other isn't meant to replace each other, but we can actually uh, use them in conjunction. And so just a brief primer, uh, I'm just going to log in here as our test clinician. For those sure. who have not it's seen healthy. it. Sorry to inter I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I see two kind of grayed out, um, half of your screen is being covered by two sort of what look like gray boxes. It might be just other pops. Thank you very much. That's much better. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Oh, those are the uh, the media, the WebEx things. So uh, for those who haven't seen it before, I'm just going to access one uh, through an encounter. And then we use our test patient here for us. And I'm going to come down to the action panel on the left-hand side, and I'm going to click form, and I'm going to search for it, or I can browse for it. In this case, I'm just going to browse so I can show all the other CDM ones at the same time. And it's located in the top folder, uh, labeled CDM PEDO. So as the name implies, this has an affiliation with PEDO. Uh, this was created before they were disbanded, and uh, this was used in conjunction with a, the incentive care billing that you would uh, submit on the annual basis. And in the kits, so I'm just going to open the COPD one. It's like this. And what they're meant to do is uh, you can do essentially almost a whole chronic disease visit with one of these forms. You can enter observations here. And moving down the list, we can also order tests by actioning the checkboxes. Over here on the right hand side, we have a toolkit. And this is now uh, invalid. What was required back then uh, when you submit annual care billing uh, for your patients is that you need to submit the toolkit that registers them as well. And that would be part of the auditing process. Uh, that's no longer active because PETO is now since gone. But it doesn't mean that there isn't value to the CDM form. Uh, one example is uh, a lot of clinicians I know instead of using this on a regular, they kind of use it as a concise way to do an annual visit with the patient. Uh, the benefit to it is that I'll show it afterwards, but there's flow sheets as well, so you're able to compare like a year's worth of observations, like the, the summary observations for a year uh, with the patient, and you can line them up year by year, and it's just an easy way to compare. So whereas this one is the more basic and generic side, uh, if you click the next tab, this is more disease specific. So it's COPD, like so. You can set like things such as the date of diagnosis and a lot of questions here uh, related specifically to the disease itself. If I scroll to the bottom here, we have a box here. It's rather small, but you're able to enter encounter notes here. So instead of typing them here, we can enter chart notes here and then they'll populate through once we uh, close this form. The next side over here, this very last tab, COPD notes. Uh, I don't have any COPD notes for Forrest, but if I did, what it does is that it, uh, it pulls together all the notes that you entered in the last 12 months have been coded with COPD and kind of condenses it into a summary so you don't have to go back and forth between all your encounter notes. But again, this is a older form, obviously from the PEDO era, and uh, a lot of clinicians have elected not to use it. It is not required anymore for GPSC billing, but it is still a tool that we have in our EMR should you want to use it or should the clinicians you train wish to use it. And once I hit save, it's going to ask, do I want to push the information through? I'm going to say yes. Give it a moment. It's actually sure. things on the Yeah. I have a question about um, 
the codes that that COPD form pulls, I haven't really checked checked it, but does it pull, pull just 491 or does it pull the other coding for COPD as well? No, it pulls this, uh, this standard one. It doesn't have the ability to distinguish all, because I, I am aware that there's a lot of ICD and ICOs that would qualify it for COPD, but uh, it seems to pull this one. Okay, the 491? Yeah. Uh, I could double okay, thank you. this one. Uh, yeah, this 496. One 496, actually. Sorry. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yep. And as you can see here on the right-hand side on the action tracker, it's ordered two tests. It's coded my encounter. It's pushed through the notes that I typed previously. And if I go to pathology over here, you'll see that I have two tests here ready for the software form to print. Again, uh, not necessary, but it is a tool that is so, uh, according to a lot of physicians, have a lot of value. Now, this is not to be confused with uh, the TSP module that we're going to be showing here now. Uh, these are more updated, and it's developed in conjunction with Docker, the DC, and PSP. So they are more updated. They are the more current tool set that uh, will be used for heart failure and COPD, uh, which is what we're going to touch next. I'm just going to close this, and we'll start a new encounter altogether so we can start fresh. Again, I'm going to start a new encounter, search for my test patient. In the same way I access the CDM ones, I'm going to move down to the form. And again, the most used form templates get tracked here. So as you have been using the CDM ones, I mean the PSP ones, I can search for it directly by name or browse the folder. In this case, I'm going to search for it directly by name. I'm going to be showing the COPD one first. <clears throat> click Enter. Here we are. Double click it. So it'll bring this up. And this is not a PSP form, but instead it's kind of like a home page that we developed that links to all the PSP tools over here. Uh, in the event that you want to use a singular form, that's an option as well. So if I wanted to use the home oxygen program form located here, I could still search for it here. So home oxygen. They're still available. And also alternatively, you can search for it under the practice support uh, program folder. It'll be right here, and you can find it like that. And this all included in your topic guides that uh, will be distributed after this session as well. Oh, sorry, I seem to move my form out of the way. So here's the form. So similar in the sense that the CDM form uh, kind of is like the home page for the visit. For our ideas of developing the home page is that you don't have to go back and forth and look for each individual form. You can just open one and it'll link you to everything else that you need uh, related to the PSP tools. So here, uh, we have the provider tools on the right-hand side. So if you're to click on it, it links you to that form. Forms that have an auto-populating feature with demographics, uh, they'll automatically push it through, like you can see here. So go ahead and then action what you need to on the form, and then you can save and close it. The process is more or less the same when you go through the other forms. So again, uh, any auto-populating demographics that can be pulled will be pulled. Uh, if you refer to the algorithm or any of these uh, PDFs separately, you'll see that we've done our best to replicate the original form, of, uh, the original look of these forms. So more or less, we haven't changed much of the look. So any clinicians that, uh, quote, unquote, are a little afraid of change, they're not really going to get that here. Uh, additional information that applies to these forms, say this home oxygen program that has an additional handout, we've included that as well. It's just they're usually located on the second tab or third tab should a form uh, need more than one. Uh, should the clinician need to refer back to the algorithm, we have it uh, right here, so it is linked. It is going to be a hard copy on your system. It actually doesn't take up too much space, so if that's a concern, they shouldn't have to be concerned because uh, we loaded it directly onto the library, so it cuts out the need for the internet connection, and it actually loads pretty quick. So if I click that, there it is. And then, yeah, in case you need anything for the master algorithm, you can find it all there.
So Derek, this is Joe from BCH. I'm just wondering, um, with respect to I didn't know I didn't I didn't see if the requisitions had um, specific um, um, inf contact information for some of the referral sources. Like I don't know if there's barometer is that lo is it local Vancouver or can it be changed if it, if there's other offices in uh, other areas? Oh, sorry, could you repeat that? Like the, the requisitions for let, let's say like spirometry or whatever, I, 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 wasn't, I didn't, didn't see if, if the requisitions had information about where the referral, like contact information about the referral office, wherever you're referring to. Like can that be, can those templates be changed to have local information as opposed to lower mainland information? Uh, yeah, but, but that would take some work in the background and yeah, it definitely can be done. And if it's required by per clinic basis, then they'll have to contact us directly to change that. Otherwise, we just created the form the way we receive the PDFs. Okay, thank you. It's Kelsey. We, um, yeah, so in terms of like the, the way that the clinic might customize this, and um, I think every um, EMR platform is a bit different that way, so if, if there's an, a need for the vendor assistance to request it, but the way Bruce and I, like the way the group approached it was that we verified that um, we actually only included refer referral forms that we knew were provincially accepted. So um, we're kind of trying to move away from having um, like I know that sometimes the versions are available on the algorithm, but when it comes to sort of like a, um, provincially available forms um, in the EMR, we've we've really only taken the step to do what we know would have been accepted provincially, just so that we're not in a situation where people are using forms that will not be accepted. So Thanks. in terms of the yeah, like the approach for the cl like for the clinics need to to kind of either customize or get local forms and things in is is I guess technically out of scope for this work. Okay, thanks. Good to know. Okay, and uh, also on the front page, we've included this box here. I already got rid of the text that said, please include encounter notes here, but just similar to the way the mental health one worked and the chronic disease forms, uh, we included this box here so you can enter the chart notes. So, so again, it's a lot less back and forth. So we're gonna enter some COPD chart notes here, like so. And then when you hit the save close button, it'll actually push it into the encounter as well. Uh, moving over, uh, we have our next tab, physician resource. So the same way we linked the algorithm, we've linked in each individual uh, physician resource and we separated it so they don't have to sift through the uh, algorithm to find it. So if I were to click this one, it's just linked to it directly. And again, just like the algorithm, this is uh, loaded into their document library as well. So to pull it up, it's quite quick. My computer is a little slow right now, so this is gonna be a little slow to close, but uh, again, this is uh, dependent on hardware. But as you can tell, it, it actually doesn't take that much. I, I know when I import this into my own hard drive and testing the file size, it, it's very small. It doesn't take very much room at all. And the next, so all these are here. In the next side over, we have a patient handout section. Again, works similar. If you were to click one, it loads it. In addition, though, to the hot links here, we also have uh, check boxes. So this is a great way for your clinician to track the uh, resources that they've been handing out to their uh, patients. So how I action that, we're just gonna wait for this to go down. I apologize for this, should I restart my computer? So if I were to click, let's say the clinician has handed out COPD action plan, uh, Managing COPD lung association, managing COPD, and then surgical options. Just as an example, these three. I'm going to come back over to the main tab here, PS, PSP COPD. You see it's pushed it into this text box. And let's say I'm done with this encounter now with my patient. I'm going to hit save close. And it pushes it through into their standard encounter notes. So it's kind of a nice hub to do uh, a lot of things all at once without bouncing back between too many screens. Uh, you'll notice that problem one is not uh, coded. So uh, when you're showing this to the clinicians, they are still encouraged to uh, code their encounters. We have that listed in the topic guide as well. The reason why we left it out is that COPD can be subjective depending on the ICD-9 code available. Uh, in the future though, 
with some discussion, and this will include with the Heart Failure uh, module as well that I'm going to show after this, is that we can change this to code the encounter automatically should this be uh, something that's desired. And it, and it wouldn't be too much work on our side. Hi, it's Joe again. Did it actually send to print those documents? I think I missed that part. Those handouts for the patients, did it print them? Uh, as you... a, uh, so if I were to open one, uh, right okay, thank you. Yep. <clears throat> uh, do we have any questions about the COPD portion? And if not, I'm just going to jump over to the heart failure. I will take the silence as a no. So I'm just going to close all this, start another encounter, so we start fresh. Starting again. Sorry, was that a question? Okay. So again, I'm going to access from here, form, and I'm going to be looking for a heart failure this time. And this time I'm going to elect to browse just so I can show both. Uh, the PSP support program folder, I'm going to open that, and then I'm going to access the heart failure one now. The main form is the PSP heart failure. Again, if you want to access each form individually, you have the ability to. But in this case, I'm just going to pull up the main form again. Uh, one thing I should note, the Quit Now referral form, it is one form for both modules. So I believe the Quit Now referral form is part of the heart failure. It got rolled out in the algorithm. We just made that first. And then the COPD also has a quit now referral form, but we didn't put it into the folder of COPD. So in the event that you're working COPD and you're looking for the heart of the quit now referral form, it's just located under the heart failure uh, folder. So again, uh, if you wanted to enter chart notes here, you could do that. So heart failure chart notes. Uh, the provider tools. So again, uh, we replicate the same uh, look and feel. It, it operates just the same. So if you needed the heart failure patient questionnaire, just click that, action what you need to. And then I'm sorry, the quit now referral form is actually in both of them. Uh, it is uh, in both of them, but here in the system, it's just linked to the one under the heart failure form. We, we, uh, we decided just would be quicker to not have to build the same form twice. It, it, and you can access it through both modules. It's just loaded under the heart failure folder is all. Thank you. And then once you're done here, just save and close. And again, the process is uh, the same. The forms work the same way, so if anything uh, can be auto automatically populated, it'll pull up here. Uh, this one has the ability to pull some current uh, measures. Once you're done, just go ahead and save and close. So again, uh, physicians who have been using the PSP tools already, uh, this should look very familiar to them because uh, we've done our best to not alter the appearance of them. Oh, this one includes a second tab for the wait times. Also another handout. And as you're using forms here, I should note that it still gets tracked in the encounter even though you're accessing it through this main form. Uh, algorithm also included with this with the heart failure. <clears throat> Sorry again. Uh, the second tab over, we have the position resource. So just like the way it happened with COPD, we have it located here, separate. This 
this one happens to have a lot more uh, physician resources than the COPD module. But again, if you needed to use one, just click here. Sorry, guys. Uh, I really should have restarted my computer. <laughs> And lastly, the patient resource works the same way. They're linked by the buttons, and again, we have the checkboxes to help the clinician track uh, what they've been handing out to their patients during the visit. So let's go for activity, exercise, and depression. Just gonna push it over to the main box here, the space. And then when we're ready, we're gonna hit save and close. It's gonna push it through to your uh, notes here. And then again, uh, we do have a reminder in the topic guide for you to uh, tell the clinician that they should still code their encounter. So in this case, nope, oh, not at 420, like so. Uh, if you want to access each individual library item, uh, they can be found up here. So maintain, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. You're gonna go to maintain library and under each individual folder. So if we're gonna be looking for something COPD, they'll be located all here. They're uh, named separately. So anything with PR is a uh, physician resource and then PH would be a patient handout. Same thing here for heart failure. Like so. Uh, that more or less uh, covers my end. Uh, I'm open to questions. Yeah, are you planning to um, show us how to like maybe pull up a report of people who have been given a certain form or, or who have been referred out at all in, when using uh, this form? It wasn't on the schedule. Um, because that would require some more prep on my end, because then I would have to dig up the HRIs for these forms. But oh, okay, okay, no worries then. And Derek, it's, yeah, maybe could you just explain though? I mean, that was part of the um, being able to report on the um, the module QI measures was part of the like um, requirements. So we, I know that you guys um, like you're able to do it, but so could you just kind of talk about how that would how that would work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm just gonna open up one of these module forms. Uh, I'm gonna take, say for example, this home oxygen program form. So uh, similar how the mental health uh, QI measures worked, there were some, uh, sorry, some specs released for us by PSD and the ability to report on these. And within each form, uh, whenever you enter data here, they're linked to an HRI. So HRI is just the way we track uh, data that gets entered and becomes metadata. So it's the hard code. So the way the QI measures will work, uh, let's say this is one of the specs that they required uh, O2 flow rate. And when the QI measure runs, it's gonna look for a specific code and it's gonna sift through all your patients that have had this form filled out with this specific measurement. And maybe there's a spec in relation to you know, five and above. So then the way it will work is it will look for this form, it will look for this code, and then it will look for um, scores from certain ranges, and it will bring it up on the query. Uh, for those who are familiar with the fine optics query, uh, that's how our um, KPI dashboard works. It'll work in conjunction with the fine optics query. Great, thanks, Derek. So that was really quick. We guys missed that really quickly. Are there any other um, questions right now just about um, any of the forms? I could maybe talk to Derek and Stephanie about if you guys are interested, like if you definitely, if you think you have practices that would wanting to be doing some reporting on this, maybe we could talk about doing um, just a, a session or even maybe just getting something a little bit um, 
of instruction on a user guide or something about how you might do that. Okay, wow. Yes. Well, <laughs> we went through that really quickly. Um, uh, okay, well, just a reminder that um, it's been recorded. Also, there's um, they've created some great user guide documents that um, uh, I believe Aaron has already sent out. Um, Derek also um, had a good idea, which is we, we're going to also send out um, their their user, user guide information on the um, the other CDM functionality that he showed at the beginning, just so in, in case you know you're getting questions from practices about what's the difference and how do they both work. Um, as Derek mentioned, though, the the old um, CDM forms that were built were kind of um, in conjunction with the with the pedo days, and and those used to be requirements for GPSD buildings, but they um, are no longer. So um, I don't believe a lot of the GPS are still doing that, but I could be wrong. You could have practices that want to use them. So we'll send out that document as well, and we'll send out a link to the recording and. Um, if you are specifically interested in, in how the reports would work, please drop me a note because um, if there's interest in that, we can figure out how to um, get that information to you guys as well. Either maybe we could find another training session or um, I could talk to Stephanie about options for um, the sandbox or something. We'll, we'll try to see what we can do. Hi, it's Joy. Is, yeah. is, sorry, is this something that we can offer up to our, our, the physicians, the clinics now, or is it something that is coming when we do a module? Like, is this a... a good, good question. I have to defer to Derek and Stephanie about um, if it's live or not. I don't know the answer to that, but I presume it either is or will be very soon. That's why we're, we usually do these trainings in conjunction with it being, being um, available. Okay, sure. so that means no. it doesn't have to wait for a module in order for, like, when it's live, no. anyone can have yep. it, right? It's my understanding. Yes. Yep. Okay, yep. and then my other thing on this sheet, I think um, the, the, there isn't a, um, at least maybe I can't, I don't, don't recall, um, how to get to the um, sheets through the library. So it would be nice if on this uh, user um, there was a pathway of how to get that, because I just wrote it down on this sheet, but I can't see it here. Like the, the, there were three different ways to get to the for, to the tools, right? So, so one was through forms, one was through browse, one was through a library. Uh, I don't see the instructions about the library, so I just was wondering right. if it could be added. Yeah, I could definitely add that on the topic guide and resend them to uh, Kelsey. It wasn't to access the forms; it was actually to access the uh, the patient handouts and the uh, physician resources individually. But yeah, that would be I good, handy. To, that would be handy to have here, so that they would, yeah. so we know to tell them that. No problem. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, it's Stephanie. Um, I can speak to the delivery of each one of these modules, the um, delivery of uh, COPD and heart failure, PSP pain, the EMR panel, and the child and adult mental health forms. Um, we will be delivering these uh, via dropping them in our hosted sites uh, within the next um, probably a week or week and a week and a half. So every user, every client will actually have a copy of this downloaded for them instead of them having to go and um, actually uh, update this themselves. And they'll get a notification that they've actually um, been dropped. And of course, Kelsey will send that information to you also so that you know and you can share it with your end users. Uh, it just Great. makes it a little bit easier. Um, I've got, I got approval uh, from product services to do that drop. And uh, the KPIs, this is an older version of Profile, and we have a version 8 coming. So there won't be any key performance indicators for this particular module, although it exists for all the other ones, um, until the new release, because it's a large, massive version 8 release and it is still in alpha, so I can't even show it to anyone. I don't even have a build for it at this point. So that's why we, Derek couldn't show you um, how to um, get your KPIs from these forms. Okay, thanks Stephanie for bringing that up. So maybe we'll keep connected as to how that's going and um, when we can show them something around reporting, we'll figure out the best way to do that. Great, thanks. Okay, all right, and there's still nothing on the chat line, so I think uh, that's probably it. 
Um, thank you very much for everyone for your time this afternoon. You're getting a, a lot back of it, which is, I hope, a good thing. Thanks, Derek and Stephanie, for the presentation today. And, yeah, we'll send out the subsequent documentation and the recording shortly. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Kelsey, do I, do I need to stay on the line for a, a little more of a discussion, or are we good to? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, Kelsey. Together. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.